a way of making yourself better. It's not just another religion. But Christianity is a transformation process into the Son of God. Let this mind be in you, which was also in Christ Jesus. Create in me a clean heart, O God, and renew a right spirit within me. What are those? Those are cries from individuals who desire to be transformed into the very image of Jesus Christ. And what is the heartbeat of God? It's the lost. From the very book of Genesis chapter 3, we see God doing everything he said <coughs> to show man that he has a way of redemption. That man might have messed up. Man sinned. But God is going to provide a way of escape. He is going to provide a way of salvation. He is going to send his son to die on a cross. What is the mentality of Jesus Christ? To seek and to save that which is lost. Oh, that we would have the heart of God and the mind of Christ. That we may step outside of our comfort zone and tell others about Christ before it's too late. We need to recognize man's sinful condition. In Romans chapter 3 and verse 23, it's part of the Romans road. It tells us that some have sinned and come short of the glory of God. Right? No. All have sinned. Not just one, not just two, but all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. That's you, that's me, that's Joe Schmo walking down the street, that's our friends, our family, our co-workers. Everyone we know have sinned because they were born into it. Look at the deception in this world. We can look at all the lies in politics. We can look at the deception of countries, of rulers. We can look at the cruelty of people. We can look at the world around us. We can look at history, the Armenian Genocide, the Holocaust. These are not things that are attributes of God. These are a result of sin entering into entering into the world. What is the punishment for sin? Romans 6.23 It is death. For the wages of sin is death. And God informs us. I was getting there, brother. God tells us that throughout our life, everything that we do, we are accruing wages whether good or bad. And as long as we do not accept Jesus Christ as our personal Savior, everything we've been storing up, storing up, all those deeds, every time we disobeyed God, every time we lied, every time we stole, every time we broke the Ten Commandments, all these things are stacking up in a patient that's waiting for us if we do not get right with God. But God does not leave us with doom and gloom. He said, you are born into sin. All your disobedience and rebellion is building up against you. There's a case being built up against you in heaven for all the works that you've done against me. But there's a way to clear your record. He said, the gift of God is eternal life. The gift of God. Not anything you can do. There is nothing you can do to clear that record in heaven. Of all those bad deeds that are being piled up and being stored for the day of judgment. There is no good work that will erase one bad deed. Two rights will not correct a wrong. It's all being stored up. But God said there is a way that you can make things right. He said you can't do it. It doesn't matter how many pilgrimages, pilgrimages you make to Israel. It doesn't matter how much you give to the poor. It doesn't matter if you're the best person alive. It's not through you. It's only through my son, Jesus Christ. And I have given him as a gift. I wrapped him in humanity. 
and delivered to you in a cradle. For one reason, that he may seek out and save that which is lost, that he may die on a cross. The most painful way in all of history, the worst way to die has been said is crucifixion. <coughs> And God did not choose to send Christ into radical Islam to be beheaded. He didn't send him to be burned at the stake by the Catholics. He didn't send him to be drowned. He didn't send him to be drawn and quartered. He sent him to die the worst way that humanity has ever thought of. And that is through crucifixion. God said, I love you that much that I'm going to send my only son to clear your record. All you have to do is confess your sins, accept him as your personal savior, and follow my word. Follow the guidelines I have set, that I may be with you one day. When we look at the punishment for death, the wages of sin is death, no one's excluded. Not you, not I. And this sinful condition was inherited through Adam. We find that in Romans chapter 5 and verse 12. If someone would please read Romans 5, 12. And we are going to end on this note. Romans 5.12. Oh, go ahead and read that. Wherefore, as by a man sin entered into the world, and death by sin, and so death fell upon all men, for that all have sinned. And who is this one man to whom Paul is referring to? All men. It was Adam. By Adam, sin entered into the world, and death by sin. Now, because of that, through Adam, Sin has been passed on to each individual. And we may have gotten things right with God. We may have asked God to forgive us of our sins. We might have stopped doing them and we may have accepted Jesus Christ as our personal Savior. But are we content enough just to sit in our pew? Because that is not God's design. God's design was to go ye into all the world and preach the gospel. <clears throat> Reach the lost at any cost. Step outside of your comfort zone. Because it's our responsibility. We need to develop, not only realize that it's our responsibility and get a hold of that to tell others about Christ. It's our responsibility. But we need to get a burden for souls. We need it's something that grips us to the utter core that if I don't tell them about Christ, then who will, Brother Eli? If I don't do it, will they ever have somebody come along and tell them, you know, there's only one way into heaven, and that is through Jesus Christ. You know, this world has deceived you. They say there's many ways into heaven. That it doesn't matter what religion you are. But that's not true. Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh unto the Father but by me. It's our responsibility to reach the lost. And we need to develop a burden within ourselves to reach it. That we may have that driving force, that thing within us pushing us that I gotta tell. If I don't tell, who's going to? That thing that pushes us outside of our comfort zone. It may take us stepping out at first. Have the Spirit of God dealing with us. You gotta tell that individual about Christ. You gotta make sure that they know how 
Tanner into heaven. They got, you got to make sure that they know that I love them and that I sent my only son to die for them. Because if you don't, maybe no one else ever will. Any thoughts, any questions? If not, let's bow our heads in prayer and be, uh, prepare our hearts for service. Gracious Heavenly Father, we give you all praise and glory for everything you've done for us and shall continue to do. Now we give you all praise and glory for who you are and what you're about to do today. Even right now, we rebuke every attack of the enemy that should come our way. We pray that you set your angels at the four corners of the property above and below, that no attack of the enemy may penetrate. I pray that our hearts and our minds will be in one mindset and one accord, that we may worship you in sincerity and truth, that the Holy Ghost may move as he so desires, <coughs> making himself visible as he so chooses. I pray that our hearts and our minds will be good soil for your word to fall upon, Lord, that we may take it with us throughout the week, but even greater than that, that we take root in our hearts, that we may apply it to our lives. I pray, Lord, that you know the song leader and the musicians, Lord, give them, give them a special blessing as they praise you upon the string instruments and the vocal cords, and only the pastor as it brings forth your message today, and only his mind and his lips to bring forth your word. We ask all these things in the name of Jesus. Amen.